Okay, I've switched to a longer line because I want to take this opportunity to show you um, one of the other ways we taught her to move forward, which was using a butt rope. Before I do that, I want to show you how we taught her to disengage her hind end. So whenever I'm working with her on something that will be transferable to riding once she's old enough, I work with a hand near her with her to simulate a hand in the rain. And the way I've taught her to disengage her hind end is she knows from experience that pressure means to move off, although we don't use escalating pressure. So the first thing I do is lift that hand and then just put a little bit of a cue on her hind. And I can do the same thing on her front end. If I've got the rope in my hand, I lift it to create a little bit of pressure and can move her front end away. So she's mo learned to move off of really light pressure. Now one of the other ways we taught her to move forward was to use a butt rope. And of course the way this is usually taught on horses is it's forced on them. They're forced to go forward. All I did is, let me turn so you can see this, is I'm using a 22 foot lead rope and I just created a loop and desensitized her to the feel of the loop going over her back, around her legs, and then over her haunches. Take up the slack and then instead of driving her forward what I do is I put a little bit of pressure on the hind, and she went, because she already knows this. But what I did is I put a little bit of pressure on the hind, and then pointed. And since she already knows the point means forward, I never needed to apply excessive pressure to her. It's just a little bit of pressure, and she goes forward. And then a little bit of pressure and then we steer her. Here we go. And anytime she hears a click, of course, that means you've done what I want and you've earned your treat. Now, what we were also able to do is then use this 22-foot rope to create a loop all the way around her and teach her how to drive from behind. We've already talked about that with the 12-foot rope. Go forward. That's a girl. And so I can walk with her from behind and stop her. Oh. So she feels a lift on the rein even from behind. Just She'll demonstrated stop. how to use a, a 12 foot line or a 22 foot line to teach tempo to drive from behind. And now I'm going to show how we transferred that to long rein. So since we've taught her to go forward with a point and a little bit of pressure using the butt rope, I put the reins around her, point, apply a little pressure, and when I say little, I mean very little, make three or four ounces. It's just a cue, I'm not forcing her to go forward. First thing you want to teach her is to whoa, whoa. She responds to that very nicely. Again, we taught her that. Um, earlier so we can transfer it here and then teach her to turn. Very nice and as soon as she follows the feel, she's just learning this. This may be mm, the third or fourth time we've had her in long reins. Go forward. That's a girl. There we go. So she's doing really well for this being one of her first times. Now I'm going to ask her to turn left. And notice that as I let, as I increase tension on the left rein, I let the right lane rein slide through my hand so it didn't create double pressure. And I've also taught her to be comfortable with all these ropes around her. Okay, one of the other things I wanted to demonstrate was how we've taught her to um, not just tolerate, but I think maybe even enjoy pressure. Uh, so we'll take a 12-foot line like this, swing it over her back, pull it up under her girth, 
and then I connect my hands like this. Now that's where I started. So I'd click and treat just for her tolerating that. Then it's really easy to apply pressure just by torquing these two ropes together. And I don't know if you can see that. Kim, if you can like close up on that, you can see I'm actually creating a significant amount of pressure. And I gradually increased it. And then I click at the maximum amount of pressure, hold the pressure for a couple of more beats after I've clicked, and then release. That's about as hard as I can twist it. So I'm exerting you know, several pounds. One of the other things we wanted to demonstrate was ground tying. And you've seen this in a previous video with my mare Puck. And it all starts from leaving the rope uh, coiled on the ground. That's a signal to the horse that she's to stay right there. And again, we teach this using successive approximation. So we start by standing right with her. And uh, if she stands with us right by, then we gradually increase the distance so that if she steps out of her tie, we can easily and gently put her back. I was, I was actually hoping she would come out of it a little bit so I can show you how we do that. It's just like with the circling game, we don't want to show you only the things she does perfectly because you don't really learn anything from that. Let me see if I can get her to... No, she's, she's learned this lesson pretty well. But if she were to step out, of um, the tie and say I was standing right next to her. I would have the rope in hand and I'm just going to ask her to step forward. This is cheating a little bit. And I would just easily just stop her and use my backup cue to put her right back where she belongs and then the rope goes immediately back to the ground. And the last thing we want to show you today is um, that she'll lead over obstacles and send over obstacles. So we started off with ground poles and then worked up to things like a log. That's the girl. Come on. When she gets paused, we just present a target. Here we go. Then we approach him with gradually more energy. Now this is change direction. And then just as we did on the circle game, take that energy and Teach her to go over without us. Come on. And notice we aren't asking her to jump very much and we don't ask her to jump very often. We just want her to be confident about moving over obstacles. Come on, baby. And then the one last thing I wanted to show was something called the squeeze game. And again, this is an obstacle, but it's using your body as an obstacle. And that's just asking her to go between me and a fence and then disengage after she gets through. So I'm arm's length um, from this fence. I'm going to ask her first to back up. Here we go. and then go through and a little more pressure than I wanted but she makes that choice I'm not pulling her head around but again if she hits the end of a rope she has to learn that it's not going to give very nice tempo now I'm going to send her through with a little more energy this time I'm going to back her up and trot forward trot. and send her through lift and treat